Well, I'm meteorologist Vin Crosby from the Weather Show with Vin Crosby on YouTube. And boy, uh, many people have contacted me about the storm in Florida. They have loved ones there or they live there themselves. So based on my 30 years of experience of covering hurricanes such as Andrew, being in the storms, seeing storm surge, I'm going to give you my pointers on what to expect. Many of you watching have never experienced this type of a storm, this type of a disaster firsthand. So I'm going to try to paint a picture uh, to help alleviate some of the pains and stresses that are coming your way or loved one's way over the next well, several weeks, to be frank. It's going to be a long cleanup uh, process with Hurricane Irma. First of all, it's a Category 4 storm. It's going to remain that way. And as I said earlier, weeks ago, um, that this storm would form an area of high pressure to its north. All these big storms do. And it keeps it on a more westward track. So all along, I've been saying this thing has a real good chance of going more west than the forecast track and then making a turn. It would not surprise me if it still goes a little bit more west before it makes a turn. It may not make a turn, but uh, right now we think it's going to make a turn to the north. And it's going to be a devastating turn because it's going to go right up along Interstate 75, on the coast of Florida and the peninsula of Florida, and then foul 75 all the way up through Georgia. So this is going to leave a path of mass destruction over uh, several areas. It's not going to be widespread, though. It's going to be concentrated right around that eye of the storm, especially after it makes landfall. The intensity will go down, but I think where it makes landfall along the coast, there will be widespread damage uh, for a much wider path. So what I've done is I'm going to break it down uh, piece by piece, and then as we go along in the video, um, I'm going to share uh, maybe some safety tips, maybe some things you can do to help maybe improve your life. So uh, let me show you something uh, coming up here that I think will be very very helpful for those uh, in and around the path of this storm. This is one of the many different things you can do to help you know ease the uh, issues that are coming your way if you're in the path of the hurricane because more than likely you're going to be without power and you're going to be without power for days. And so flashlights, batteries, all that stuff is good, but a real simple thing that you could do with supplies comes in, well that's a tuna fish can. Tuna fish, great thing. Make sure you have a, a can opener that you can use uh, without power. Very important. And then you can use the can opener, um, open it up, eat the tuna fish for, for great protein, and those little candles. Put them inside the tuna fish can, light them, and then it prevents fires and that sort of thing from happening. But then in the meantime, once all that wax melts, you kind of form a bigger candle. So you keep the wax and the, the wick and and, and it helps for firelight, helps for warmth. Uh, all these things very important. It's going to get very wet, so you're going to need some other things too, like waterproof matches. Waterproof matches, they're going to be very important. Make sure you have it you know, wrapped up pretty good in a plastic bag and baggies because, um, yep, you're going to need those matches to maybe start a little fire, get some candle lights going, that sort of thing. The other thing that you're going to need um, is dry toilet paper, toiletries. Make sure they are dry. Make sure they are wrapped in bags because a lot of you folks, like I said, are not going to have power for several days. And um, you may, you know, have to improvise. You have to do little Boy Scout survival techniques. Having a good buck knife, having a good knife, that's going to be a good thing for you in this situation. Um, cutting rope, cutting strings that sort of thing. And then more importantly, which really should be at the top of the list, especially in the time now prior to the landfall of the hurricane, is definitely have a, a good handle on basic first aid. Know what to do, because uh, the fire and rescue are not going to be able to get to you if there's a major emergency. Know what to do if you have a large gash that you need to stop the bleeding. Know how to use pressure points. Know all that stuff or at least have the information printed out so you can have it handied without your phone or, or computer because you won't have that during the storm. So make sure you review those now. If you have any medications, anything you need to take, make sure you have a good supply of it because you're going to go days without being able to go and get them at the pharmacy. 
stuff like that. Water, of course, that's a no-brainer. There will be a, a lot of people. There's so much attention to this. Um, a lot of folks will be coming in to help you out, the National Guard. So it's not going to take a lot of time for folks to get to you. Also in Florida, you have to look out for some certain things like alligators and snakes. Make sure you have a good stick, a good long stick that when you're walking through the feet of water, you can put that stick well in advance of you to make sure that there's not a critter there that you're going to startle or step on or, and perhaps have some injury. So that's certainly a good heads up there. Um, of course, know what to do if you're bitten by a snake or maybe some of the spiders that will be moved around with this storm. Again, once it gets in land, the path is going to be fairly narrow up along 75 where there's going to be massive structural damage. Massive structural damage. I did have a friend that actually uh, contacted me. She has horses up around Deerfield Beach. A little bit of improvement in the forecast for that area because the storm is taking a little further west track, but still dangerous. But if you do have animals or any stables, uh, this is important for humans as well. Make sure any sharp projectiles hanging on the wall are taken down because they will fly through the air at speeds of 50 to 70 miles per hour that will impact many things and tear skin and flesh. It won't be pretty. So make sure sharp objects are taken down along that path of the eye of the storm and maybe a, give or take 10, 15 miles either side of the eye of the storm. Animals, they're tough. Don't worry about them. Worry about the people. Uh, animals uh, will take care of themselves, especially horses. They're tough as nails. So that's a few of my tips. Uh, obviously, you're going to be drenched, soggy. It's going to be miserable. Um, it, it, it's going to be a, the most... Uh, so the, the more dry you can be, the better in this situation, especially after the storm moves on through. Make sure you have mosquito repellent. That's a very important thing as well. Uh, stuff like that. All right, I'm going to do a little... Um, walk and talk through the maps to give you um, an idea of what I think. All right, I'm going to take you through right out the landfall, through Florida, where I think the storm's going, name out some cities, and the results of maybe some of the damage that will be happening. First off, I think the eye of the storm is going to come right up uh, in between, uh, say, Marathon and Isle Morada. It'll break my dad's heart. He loves Isle Morada. But that's where I think the storm and the eye is going to go. Anywhere from Marathon through Isle Morada, Key Largo, um, those areas, anything especially standing is, is going to be gone. 98% uh, of the structures on that area will be gone just due to the storm wash. It's unfortunate, and I'm glad they got everybody out of there evacuated. There will be some big damage along Pine Key and Key West as well. Then you can see I take the storm up here north going up in towards 75. It will uh, cross over Everglades City and go north. And it uh, looks like Marco Island, Naples, North Naples, all taking it on the chin with this storm. Uh, Bonita Springs, Estero, um, all the way up to Fort Myers. And then east over there by um, Ava, Mar uh, Mar Ava Maria, Harker, um, all the way on up some of these roads and back areas here, uh, Olga, uh, Lehigh Acres, all going to take a beating. Massive destruction in these areas. Um, will be very little left standing um, in these areas as far as trees and structures. But then it should start weakening, and then you're going to have to deal with a lot of wind and rain. I do like a lot of damage coming on up here through the Suncoast Estates area, uh, getting on up north into Zulful Springs, Avon Park. We'll see some pretty substantial damage. We're talking in these areas, you know, co collapsing of roofs and trees down, and, of course, some major flooding. Uh, feet of water. Winter Haven's not going to look too good after this. Lakeland, Plant City, uh, even the sides of Brandon, east areas of Tampa, really going to get hit hard with um, structural damage in the winds as this storm moves on through. But anywhere right of the eye, that's where things are going to get real nasty. So even up by River Ranch, going on up towards Lake Buena Vista, uh, Kissimmee, all these areas really going to take a real major hit 
from this storm. Of course, you can see all the waterways through uh, the area as well are going to fill up with water, massive flooding. I do see this thing continuing on north, going up through the um, Ocala area, Gainesville. Uh, by this time, it should be a down to a Category 2 or 3 hurricane, really losing its strength. But even in these areas, you're going to see tremendous tree damage, power outages as it continues to move towards the north. And then as it gets on up and towards uh, Valdosta, Georgia, Thomasville, it should go east of Tallahassee, but Tallahassee is going to see substantial flooding. Perry as well. Coming up 75 through Tifton, Albany, all going to get hammered with heavy rains, tree damage, wind damage, power line outages, um, very, very dangerous situation, massive amounts of rain, anywhere between 5 and 15 inches of rain, with some areas picking up over 20 inches. So that's going to cause massive flooding uh, throughout rivers and the waterways. Macon, Georgia uh, should take a really good pop from this. And then I think right around Macon and Valdosta down in the southern areas of Georgia, that's where we'll see a transformation from hurricane status to tropical storm status as it moves up over the city of Atlanta. That's right, Atlanta getting into it. Marietta, Alpharetta, Roswell. I used to live in these areas. Um, I know they generate water on the Chattahoochee River right through the city. There's going to be major flooding uh, along the riverways in the city of Atlanta in low-lying spots. And then the heavy rains as a tropical storm will head up north along 75 through Dalton, all around the Blue Ridge area, the Chattahoochee National Forest, getting into Chattanooga. Um, and back on over towards Tennessee in the Knoxville area. It should be a tropical depression at this point, but that's where I see massive amounts of flooding taking place in Tennessee over the next several days. All right, so that's kind of uh, what you can expect inland, trees down, power outages, uh, feet of water in some spots, and it could be real nasty inland too with, again, the critters, snakes, especially down in the south, uh, gators, Watch out for all that mess and power lines coming down in water. That's not going to be good if the power lines are active. Let's talk a little storm surge. Storm surge are around uh, the South Florida area. Uh, pretty much from the Keys on up towards Miami, getting on over towards Fort Myers. You're in that 5 to 15 foot range of storm surge. So that's 5 to 15 feet of water. The water table rises. And then there's another, you know, 20 to 30 foot waves on top of that wall of water. And it happens right around the eye of the storm when it comes on through. It'll happen in a period of around maybe 10 to 35 minutes. It's not long at all. You'll be in that horizontal rain that will hurt when it hits the skin. 100, 140 mile per hour raindrops. Not, um, not pretty. Been in it. it. It feels like little needles constantly hitting your skin. And then the water comes through and the blinding rains. And so uh, that's going to be the danger. Several blocks will be underwater um, around South Miami, down around Homestead. In those areas, tremendous amount of water is going to move on through. And back up here in these little inlets around Marco Island, very uh, popular resort, uh, Dismal Key, all through here, there should be a surge of water that gets up to Route 41 in some spots. So it's really going to be a nasty, nasty um, flooding uh, experience for some. All right, that's kind of the shakedown of what I think is going to happen and where it's going and the timing. But as you can see, the computer forecast model has changed its route. It is now coming up through the more western side of the peninsula of Florida. Going to head up I-75. It's going to cover all these major cities, very highly populated areas. Many of you will withstand this. Um, some along the coast are going to have some issues uh, with life and property. Uh, the good news, like I mentioned to my um, friend who is around uh, Deerfield Beach and that area, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, uh, all those areas, they're going to see substantial storm surge and a lot of banding and wind and waves, but if the eye of the storm does not come up that way, you're not going to be impacted as severe as before. So I know my friend with the um, horses in Deerfield Beach, uh, very, 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 very thankful about that. But there still will be some major damage in these areas as well. All right, that's the latest I've got on uh, Hurricane Irma. And we'll be bringing you more updates as this thing starts to move on through. But, uh, hey, get to the store while you get time. Again, candles, lighters, 
waterproof matches, that sort of thing uh, is what you need. Ponchos and all that stuff, don't worry about it because the horizontal rain will seep through all that stuff. You're going to get drenched no matter what. Just make sure that if you're in a low-lying area that you are, are getting to high ground because the flooding with tropical storms and hurricane landfalling storms is the number one cause of fatalities.